Hi, welcome to the video tutorial for lesson 12. It's called Functions. It's in the ratio span, and I think you need to decide where you place this lesson within the strand, and how long you spend off on it, and how you make connections with the other lessons. It's a very simple lesson that focuses the children on ratio as gradient. I had the, fir had the first, I'll tell you what happened the first ever time I taught this, it was really quite a powerful experience for the pupils. But I think you've got to you've got to decide carefully how you want to do it because it is very simple and there are some questions you could use at the end of it depending on how much you want to focus on the gradient of the line or how much you want to focus upon the, uh, the number relations and ratio. So in the lesson Gears and Cars, you know, looked at gears and this lesson starts with ratio as a function of the number of the relationship between teeth and gears. So you could give this out again, or if you do it before, give it out before. So they play with the gears, and you say, okay, here are some results that some people's got. You could just flash them up, hide and reveal. I'm going to show you some results in two minutes, but one second, off the board. And you put these results on the board. There's a, there's a power, there's an image that you could just put up that has gears on and these numbers on. You said, sort of make sense of that. Talk about it. What do you notice? And what I've deliberately put here is that one, which doesn't fit the pattern, but do they see that? So you can throw these things in all the time, depending upon how much you want to trip them up, i.e. challenge them and make them reflect upon the thinking. But essentially, they'll realise that the relationship is the same. That value is five times bigger than that value. So essentially you've got A and B, and uh, B is 5A. That's essentially what you want to think about. But I wouldn't use any of that. I would just get their thoughts on that and say, OK, can you make sense of those results? Off you go, in your pair, make sense of those results. So obviously some might do a table. Some might order them. Some will do a table, and they'll do 1, 5, 2, and 10. Some might start doing some expression, you know, or equation, sorry. B, whatever they want to call them, B is 5A, A divided by 5, A, A equals B divided by 5. And then you kind of say, what's the best way of describing this relationship? Could we use the idea of input and output? If that's the input, that's the output. How does that help us describe it? Can you think of other things that are similar to this? Then the pupils put a graph of it, where you say, right, now we're going to see the relationship. Now, the first time I did this lesson, something really quite special happened that I've never forgotten. So you told them 21 years ago. It's a long time. So I think you've got to be prepared to listen to the pupils and let them take their tentative steps towards mathematical agency, understanding maths. That's the best way to do it. You're there to stop them falling and hurting themselves mathematically, but you want to let them take their own steps to be tentative. Is it this? Is it that? Well, you tell me. What do you think? Is it this? Is it that? Rather than yes or no. We're trying to break the patterns of talk. It's not, I ask a question, they speak, I see you right or wrong, given feedback. We're breaking the dialogue pattern down, and that is very powerful. We're breaking it down by wait time. We're breaking it down by changing eye contact, body language. We're saying to them, well, what do you think about John's idea? Or there might be three ideas on the board, and you say, which idea do you like the most? Which idea do you have problems with? Discuss it. Are they the same? Are they different? This is the type of dialogue and collaboration we want. And often you, there'll be six ideas on the board. You say, as a group, talk to the person next to you, talk to the group behind you. What do you think? What happened the first time I did this? Because, it, because, we're, because it's in the day of acetate, you could overlay things on a projector. So what happened was, one group correctly did... O equals 5i. Another group did this. And that was a massive discussion point. I didn't tell them this, that came later. But they had to discuss what was going on with these. And what was interesting was I quickly realised that these had done O equals 5i, these had done O equals i divided by 5. They got it the wrong way around, they got the axes wrong. But what was interesting, I said, what do you know? Go and have a think about this. What's going on with this graph? Could you draw other lines? So what happened was, they all started to draw different lines and label them. 
And when we have the feedback, they said, Sir, this is the dividing line. O equals I. Anything above it, it's getting steeper from here, but anything above it, you multiply, and anything above it, you divide it. And I thought that was very profound for that class. They'd seen something and discovered something. What you could do is use, there are some questions that go with this that look at ratio. So you could actually focus on the ratio questions here if you wanted to. You don't need to because I think sometimes it's nice just to see what happens, just to let the pupils explore. As long as we have the correct behaviour, it will not be unproductive. We're not giving anything away. We're constantly interested in what they're seeing, so they're sharing their ideas. So this could be one you could do very early in year seven with the pupils. 